Hi guys, uh, welcome back, or good morning I should say. Uh, for those of you that are new, welcome, and for those of you that are returning, welcome back. Thank you so much to my Patreon subscribers. Uh, you mean the world to me, and I think you guys know that. I hope you enjoyed this May's uh, uh, Archangel reading and the Cupid's Love reading. They're both up on Patreon. Um, and I will put up the deck poll for the month of June. Um, I have some decks that I'm going to put in there for you guys to vote on. If you're interested in having a say in what we use in the monthly forecast or the daily forecasts, you can go over to Patreon and subscribe, um, pick a, a subscription level, and that will enable you to not only get the forecast a day early, but you can also, depending on the level that you choose, you can get other readings that are not only available on Patreon or vote in the polls to decide which decks get used next, all of that sort of stuff. So today, this reading is for, let me check my date, my calendar's on the floor, because I'm so organized. <laughs> this is for Wednesday the 6th. I am shooting this on Monday morning, so I get a little confused with this pandemic. Um, it's as if that didn't confuse me enough, um, what day I'm shooting for. So this is Wednesday the 6th of May, but it is a timeless message if you see this playing out in your... Um, in uh, your feed at any point in time, if you come across it on a date that's not the 6th of May, that's okay. Uh, it's intended to be a message for the greater collective for the highest good, so let it play through. There might be something that you're in vibrational alignment to as this uh, you're seeing this message in whatever moment you're watching it. Uh, for those of you that want to support the channel, as I said, you can go to patreon.com, look up Engelgeist, and support me there. Or you can book a private reading with me through the Facebook business page. You can follow any of my social medias. And if you use any of the Amazon affiliate links to purchase one of the decks that I use in my videos, I do get credit from Amazon. They will send me probably like a dollar or so per sale uh, from the sale. So the deck goes to you and I get a little bit of like a, what I consider a tip. If you want to use my PayPal, you can always tip me on PayPal for daily readings if you like the reading or if it especially resonated. You're allowed to do that by using my PayPal link. Just write in the um, notes, the payment notes, tip for and whatever date the reading was. Um, that way I know, you know, when when uh, it resonated with you and I can maybe go back and see what was it about that reading that, you know, maybe rang true with some of my viewers. So any and all support is totally appreciated, especially as I'm trying to get this business off the ground and make sure that post-pandemic I'm doing something that I want to be doing versus... I don't know. I just don't. This is the only thing I want to do is help others and, and read cards and connect to spirit. So through your guys' help and support, you make that a reality, especially my Patreon subscribers. So let's look at the energy and see what's going on. We've had some pretty powerful cards. And a lot of this, I don't know why I keep playing with this masculine feminine aspect, but I'm seeing it a lot lately. So I don't know what that's about. We'll keep rolling with this and see. We're working with two new decks for the month of May. Both have the title in the title Mystical. One is the Mystical uh, Dream Tarot, and the other is the Mystical Shaman Oracle. So we're calling it Mystical May, just for the fun of it. Let's see what our tarot card is. Is that only one card? Oh, that card feels really thick. Just thicker than the rest. Okay, so to keep with this fucking idea of busy, bu <laughs> busy, heavy duty cards, guys, we get the hanged man. We all know the hanged man. Look at us feeling midweek and wondering if we're stuck or maybe stuck on a decision this Wednesday. Do we have a decision that we need to make? Is there something that we're maybe running out of time about? And this is uh, the reason why I say that is look at this clock that we have up here that's on fire and creating a lot of smoke, which could be clouding our vision or our ability to make a clear decision. Um, there is some illusion with this mermaid here to me. You know, mermaids sort of entrap sailors with their beauty. Um, the wolf, it gives me this sort of symbolism of like loneliness or trying to make this decision alone. And also the moon, again, we have this intuitive um, aspect to this card. Which says to me, the, the key with the hanged man is it's always sort of like my interpretation of the hanged man. 
is there's always this opportunity to reach up and untie ourselves and we don't necessarily realize that. And only until we realize that do we actually free ourselves by making the decision or, or being able to free ourselves allows us to thus make the decision and um, uh, move forward. It's interesting that this follows, and maybe this is because I'm filming these back to back because of my doctor's appointment, but it's interesting that yesterday's, which was for the fifth, we had that fisherman bringing in that fish, and we had this fish laying by the hanged man's head, sort of looking dead or dilapidated. Are some of our dreams being let go? Are we walking away from our dreams? Or are we holding ourselves back from our dreams? Are we apprehensive about our dreams? These are all questions that I pose to you, like our goals, um, what it is that's in our subconscious or our unconscious that wants to come forward. Are we in alignment with it? is sort of what this fish is making me think. Or are we in our own way? You know, that's sort of this hanged man energy of sort of being hung up and not realizing that we can unhang ourselves at any point in time. And then getting caught up in like the minutia of like say time or worry or the struggle or the illusion of things or our loneliness, having those things add to the indecision that's already sort of at work or at play. Now the hanged man, to me is major arcana, so it's gonna pack a punch, right? This is gonna be a big decision. This is not gonna be like some, you know, easy sort of decision, but remember the underpinning energy now, this is our Wednesday forecast, so we should be going into that midweek energy was that Sophia card, which represents a strength. We have the strength to do this, to see this through, to make this decision. Whatever this decision may be, and it may feel big, it may feel important. It may feel life-changing. Or we might fear it as if it might change our life. And then I want to pose this question to them, some of those viewers that are saying, oh, there's no decisions for to me, me to make right now that are big or important. My life is good. Are we sure about that? I'm not saying that your life isn't good. What I'm saying is, are you sure there's not a decision that maybe needs to be made or a direction that needs to be sort of committed to or taken for the betterment or improvement of your life. Say your life is great or things are moving smoothly. Is there something else we can be doing to make them even, it even better? And are we sort of maybe not looking at that? You know, I'm looking at this ground here. We've got him underneath the earth. Are we burying our heads in the sand to certain, to, for some of my viewers? It's just a question that I'm posing. Because these are the thoughts that are sort of crossing my mind as I'm looking at this card. At the center of all of this is there is some turmoil. That's this big red round circle, right? This turmoil is sort of, uh, for some of us, this turmoil is what's kind of pushing us forward or making us feel like we uh, are stuck, worried. Are we running on that energy? Do we need to just let go of that energy and make a decision, move forward? Remember that Sophia card, guys. She is like strength personified, right? And she had all of those elements around her. She also had a fish, I believe, in her card, if I remember correctly. And I feel like I'm gonna just say this really quick. I feel like there's something about this wolf in this moon. There's something about the loneliness of the wolf, right? Sometimes we allow, allow the loneliness to seep in and that maybe gets us and, and screws us up. But I feel like there's something about being alone um, that's actually beneficial in this wolf. Like I feel like this wolf to me is telling me that we might need to draw ourselves into ourselves and into our intuition to make a clearer decision instead of being stuck here in the turmoil with everything spinning around and thinking, oh no, I can't achieve that even though I want that. Even though it's like right in front of me, it's just too far away, I can't make it happen. It's not possible. And I think that it is possible. It's just we don't believe that it's possible. And it's that belief that we need to sort of like um, honor, right? We're gonna use that grounding stone that is for the week. Yesterday's was wisdom. We have the wisdom and there's that success stone in between honor and wisdom. So these are sort of kind of heady, heady thoughts to be grounding in, heady ideas to be grounding in this week. Are we honoring what we want? Are we honoring our wisdom? Are we honoring our, the opportunities that are presented to us for success? Let's see what the Mystical Shaman Oracle has to say. Ooh, the medicine wheel. <whistles> Okie doke. This to me gives me definite Wheel of Fortune vibes. 
Um, if I was to attribute this, I know this is an oracle deck, so it's going to have a different meaning, which I will read to you in just a moment, but this makes me think of the idea of the Wheel of Fortune. And where we focus our energy, and it's interesting with these two big circles that we have, these cards are pairing up like a mofo. You see that, guys? Okay. When I look at this Wheel of Fortune, we have this sort of cheetah, this bird, this snake running through it. There's all of these different elements. There's the hummingbird that we had. Oh, shit. This is the underpinning energy of the week. The joy, which is the highest form of what we want this week. Do we see all of what's in this medicine wheel? It's all of these different animals and their sort of power. The snake of transmutation, the eagle, like a, uh, if this is an eagle, I think it is, it's uh, like uh, uh, using sort of the, makes me think of like the discernment or the eagle eye. This is the stealth of sort of the cheetah or this leopard, like sort of the stealth and wisdom of that, hunting what we want, going after it, choosing a direction. There's four different directions we can go in, right? And then this being 35, takes me to an eight, which brings me to that place of balance, right? Finding that balance within us, especially with the, within the four directions, with the elements of the animals. I love that this hummingbird, although he's the smallest and most sort of, uh, what would be perceived as say the weakest of these animals, he's actually got the most power, I believe this week, because he was in our Sunday forecast as joy. And also that idea of pivoting guys, oh shit. I'm going to go back to this idea of pivoting. We need to pivot on something. There's some sort of decision we need to make where we might need to move in a different direction than we expected. And the hummingbird gives us that ability to do that with ease and grace and swiftness, changing our course. But we have to be in touch with our intuition, our deeper self, our more, I don't want to say lonely self, but like taking this time alone to figure out what those answers are, not getting captivated in in sort of illusions. That's this mermaid. She's like trying to grab his attention, I feel like. And we need to use the powers within us, all of the four different elements within us, call upon those energies, that discernment, that prowess, that hunting, that transmutation, that wisdom right? That joy, that it, what brings us joy and pivot and fly as quickly as we can towards that. And then I'm going to factor in this sort of wheel of fortune aspect to it. I feel like this medicine wheel, it, I'm gonna, just going to say this, the wheel of fortune is always a card that sort of moves slowly, but then it, it moves in the way that we decide to focus it. It moves in the way that we decide to turn it. So are we turning it towards the positive or are we turning it towards the negative? That may be this red mark here. We have the green down here, the white here, and the yellow here. Which direction are we going? I think this is actually probably, if I'm not mistaken, I would say earth, fire, air, and spirit, maybe? No, no. I need a water. Hmm, there's just four different directions. Not sure, that's price in the card de definition. But to me, I'm just gonna take this and I'll, I'll read you the card definition in just a moment, but to me, it's sort of like, which way are we turning our, our, our medicine wheel? Where are we focusing it? Let me read the explanation for medicine wheel and we will see what they have to say. All right, the essence. The medicine wheel is the sacred hoop with the four cardinal directions well marked. It represents the cycle of life, the cycles of nature, and the circular pattern of our cosmos. It has been used for millennia in its in, in indigenous cultures to bring harmony and well-being to the village. Its directions symbolize the four steps the shaman takes to become a person of power and wisdom. The invitation to manifest clear blue skies in your life, which we're unable to do right here with all the, the smoke, it is important that you take a look at certain aspects of your being. Enter the medicine wheel from the south and reflect on how you are still clinging to events from the past. Continue to the west and notice which relationships are toxic and drain your energy. Step into the north and ask yourself, do I know my passion and show it? That's that hummingbird. 
and end at the east direction, visualizing how you want to live the next chapter of your life. It is up to you how much time you spend in each direction, minutes, days, or months. But when you are done, make sure to step outside the wheel and contemplate your journey. The medicine. You must not postpone your healing journey any longer. It can be difficult to start, but you must find the inner strength to step into the medicine wheel, or you may lose your opportunity. There are many ways and many paths. Choose the one you resonate most with. Once you have found it, the only mistake you can make is to not follow it. Go boldly. So this hanged man energy to me feels like, are we stepping into our medicine wheel? Are we allowing ourselves to want that fish that we've just sort of worked on finding in yesterday's um, uh, forecast through our dreams and our, um, our subconscious or unconscious? Let's look to the grounding stone and see what the grounding stone says really quick, something to ground in. So the grounding stone is for family. And I think that this to me is sort of like not only just family, like actual birth family, but the family of one's choosing. Where do we resonate? Where do we connect? Maybe some of us need to take some of these um, issues to our family. Maybe some of the things in our medicine wheel that we need to heal or some of the struggles that we're dealing with in this hangman come from our family. Um, and maybe we need to sort of also, how do I want to say this? Maybe not rely on our family, but take support or, or help from our family at this time, and I'm talking about the family of one's choosing, our tribe, our, our friends, our, our people, right, that we trust. Telling them maybe where, where we feel stuck or how we feel stuck, and then beginning this journey through this medicine wheel, like it said in that description, to bring us sort of this balance, right? Allowing our family to know, and I, again, I say family loosely, I'm talking about like the, the ones that we choose to love, not necessarily some of us may have issues in this medicine wheel that we need to address due to our actual birth family, right? So this is about like maybe focusing on that. What were they there to teach us that we can now let go of and unhang ourselves from so that we can be free to move on? I'm going to leave you guys with that. I feel like that's a beautiful um, reading for today. A lot, to con a lot to contemplate. It's rather significant, I feel like, with these two cards at the midweek with strength laying underneath it. And honor also as the grounding stone. How do we honor ourselves and the family that we came from if we have so many feelings about maybe how we were treated or how we related to them? Interesting to think about. I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I hope this makes sense. I hope it resonates. Please leave me a like, a share, a comment, a subscribe, and let me know what you think. Um, this is some deep stuff, I feel like, guys. Some work is to be done here. Enjoy it. Feel that joy of the hummingbird and pivot.